Well, addiction is one of the oldest themes we have in the uh, scientific center of uh, Tronzo. That's logical because everyone during lifetime is in contact with someone in his family or uh, uh, has uh, some uh, own problems of his own with substance abuse and dependence of uh, uh, substances. Um, well, in the Netherlands, we have, for instance, 80% uh, of the people who are drinking uh, alcohol and moreover 10% of them uh, are going to be uh, dependent or uh, are having problems with, uh, use, with the use of alcohol. I'm working at the Academic Collaborative uh, Center of Addiction as a junior researcher uh, on the theme of problematic alcohol consumption. Uh, many professionals in the Netherlands find it difficult to um, yeah, implement preventive interventions regarding the te this theme and also feel uncomfortable talking about the theme. Um, this is also the case in hospitals and uh, mental health care organizations, whereas it could actually be a really good site to find people and uh, problem drinkers to intervene at the place. We do research with uh, several organizations in the region but also on a national level. And these organizations are organizations who are working in practice on care and prevention for addicts. Uh, I work at the Academic uh, Collaborative Center on Addiction as a PhD student. And um, my research involves um, investigating uh, age limit policy uh, for harmful products, such, like, uh, such as alcohol or tobacco. And um, these policy measures, these age limit policy measures, um, help to reduce uh, the availability of um, uh, harmful products, such as alcohol and tobacco, um, for young adolescents in society. As a senior researcher, I'm involved in several projects within the Academic Collaborative Center of Addiction. And my expertise lies mainly in tobacco control and uh, reducing problematic alcohol use among uh, adults. For example, one project where I'm involved is about uh, which factors are important of intervention to reduce problematic alcohol use among older adults. And uh, it's a huge societal problem. For example, uh, older adults are drinking a lot because they are retired or feeling lonely or um, uh, having pain and the alcohol reduces this pain. So uh, we performed a systematic review and also a focus group study to check whether the findings were uh, recognized by healthcare professionals. Research showed that uh, there are several uh, factors important when uh, treating uh, older adults. For example, um, a slower, softer, less directive approach is really important, but also personal treatment. Um, uh, focusing on bereavement, grief, loss or isolation. Uh, but also social network uh, is really important as all the adults, uh, having a partner or having friends or family. And motivational interviewing was also called as, uh, also founded as an important factor. And uh, doing research in co-creation with societal partners is really inspiring because in this way uh, we can generate impacts. And that's what we do at Tanzo. Um, the first project is part of the National Prevention Agreement of the Ministry of Health, Welfare and Sports in the Netherlands. And um, one of their aims in this agreement was, to, um, was that uh, preventive interventions in hospitals and mental health care organizations should play a bigger role. And uh, for this project, I'm this, uh, I just conducted several interviews um, to study what potential barriers and facilitators are uh, perceived when implementing these types of interventions. Um, and based on this information and these interviews, we wrote an action plan for the ministry. And we also um, are writing an academic paper on the, the results of it. Um, the second project I'm working on is part of a hospital that already implemented their uh, preventive interventions themselves. Uh, which is already really nice. Um, they saw that many patients of their department um, were hospitalized frequently uh, due to their problem drinking and they wanted to do something with that. 
um, because in the past they used to only treat the somatic health complaints and not look to the uh, yeah the alcohol use or abuse uh, and now they are so um, they asked Transo to uh, yeah evaluate this project on uh, what is going well and what is going not so well uh, so they can eventually improve um, yeah the project further so I'm now doing a process evaluation for uh, the hospital as well. Um, so altogether, I really like that um, I'm combining science with practice and that I really can translate uh, things that I learned in school and from science academic journals into um, real life hospital situations, basically. In the Netherlands, we have, um, we have um, age limit policy measures for alcohol and tobacco, and these measures are um, set at 18 years of age. The problem is uh, we don't know um, uh, if vendors and sellers of these products, um, if they uh, comply uh, to these age limits. And this is a problem because this could mean that uh, young adolescents or people who are under age um, are still able to obtain these products. And that's a problem because that is harmful for their health on the long term, but also on the short term. Uh, one of the most effective measures to, uh, uh, to explore uh, compliance is mystery shopping research, uh, in which we uh, um, uh, deploy 17-year-old uh, mystery shoppers. We train uh, these people, we, uh, we uh, assist them into purchasing, uh, doing a purchase attempt of alcohol or tobacco products. Um, well, mystery shopping is effective uh, because it's, uh, it, it's a way of measuring real behavior of uh, alcohol sellers or tobacco sellers. So uh, what, you, uh, what we do uh, with our research is we, um, we monitor or we, uh, uh, we explore the actual behavior of these sellers. What you can do uh, uh, on the problem of frequently drinking is uh, people are going to get conscious when they uh, have a soberness period. A certain period of 30 or 40 days, they, uh, they do not drink. Uh, in the Netherlands, we have a, a, a Positive Lifestyle Foundation and this foundation organizes every year two campaigns. One campaign is in January, like Dry January in the UK. And one campaign is before Easter and lasts 40 days. Well, there are uh, many organizations in the Netherlands who are carrying out this campaign. We're working together with public health organizations and prevention organizations uh, in uh, uh, addiction. The campaign is called Ik Pas. In, uh, you can translate it as No Thanks. Uh, the last year we had about uh, 50,000 participants in, uh, in these uh, uh, campaigns. Every year, uh, the academic uh, collaborative uh, center of addiction in uh, Tronzo uh, does big research uh, directly before the campaign and six months after the campaign. The main topics are uh, the benefits the participants uh, experience by quitting their alcohol use uh, during 30 or 40 days. And what we see is that after uh, six months, uh, there is a very uh, much uh, improvement in uh, healthy behavior and in uh, uh, habitual behavior. Afterwards, we can use these uh, results of the, uh, of the research to improve also the campaign. For instance, uh, uh, last year, the, uh, the radio, radio commercials of the campaign uh, used uh, uh, figures of the of the research we did uh, uh, in Franzo.